everyone. It is Wednesday, August 16th, 2017, and it's time to go to work on music. Uh, it's been a great day so far. I'm in a great place and excited for a productive session. Uh, definitely having some camera issues here. Uh, you probably maybe saw yesterday's vlog. I just like deleted the whole thing. Oops, that was a bummer, but uh, you know, I'll put some systems in place to prevent that in the future, and the show must go on, you know what I'm saying? So that's just part of the deal. Um, today's going to be really great. I've got a lot on my mind, but I'm just going to uh, kind of let that percolate while I make sure that I get some music work done. So I'm going to hit some online classes, going to hit a quick guitar practice, and then get back to work on this track. I, I'm going to continue to work on the solo. If I'm honest, I'm feeling a little bit burnt on that. I feel like I could use a break from that, so I might try to work on something else on the track, but I'll update you guys with my decision there. And I just appreciate you guys for tuning in as always. Let's get right into it. Alright guys, really good session today. Got it on the online class front. Didn't go super deep with that because I was a little behind on the session at that point, like I mentioned. Just got a lot on my mind right now. Um, maybe I'll open up about that in a sec, but uh, main thing, main takeaway from that today is, I mean this seems kind of obvious when you're building a social media strategy, but the key is to be strategic about every single move that you make because most of the people out there are just winging it and just hoping for the best and you need to really not do that if you can separate yourself from the pack so I guess that goes without saying but it's still a good reminder like look this is really the key you're not just posting stuff for no reason you really want to build things with a purpose in mind um, the main things that uh, that are that we're building is a super targeted Facebook audience from the beginning um, really quality likes, people who are really into what you're doing, not just tons of likes. Um, and then email list, uh, for the reasons I've already said. So, interesting stuff, and I'll keep you guys updated as I go. Um, got into a quick guitar practice, just working on more drop D improvisation, and came up with some really cool ideas. I'm, I'm enjoying exploring the alternate tuning kind of open chord things, and I think it just lets me explore my musicality from a different perspective if that makes sense and it gets into what Andy McKee was talking about at G4 this year which is like he kind of just wanted to free himself of all his traditional patterns of things he'd played a thousand times and just kind of like open things up a little bit and I can definitely see like how that's translating to my playing right now which is really really awesome I'm, I'm really enjoying it so um, moved on from that to a little bit of singing practice just working on the um, the melody and the arrangement for this tune. Um, I really want to get a great lead vocal and right now my ideas are a little high in my current singing register. My voice is not that high naturally. Um, and I have a, a pretty good range. I can certainly work on developing it more. Um, but uh, I'm not yeah, I'm not sure. I, I just want to keep developing that and keep moving forward, and I think it's just about putting in the reps right now, so that's what I'm doing. Um, moved from there to a quick break, just reading a little bit from my recording secrets from the small studio book, and the main takeaway from that today was um, just be honest, the, two things. The first is um, have some reference recordings that of whatever type of session you're on just so that once you've got everything set up and you've done all the melding of arrays, mic arrays and stuff, that you have something to A, B it with so you have a little bit of perspective about like, oh yeah, that's what I'm going for there, that's what I'm going for there as far as like tonal colorations and overall balance. Obviously a finished commercial recording is going to sound a lot different, you know, than it sounds like in the actual studio necessarily, but 
ideally those are as close as possible from the very beginning and so that the mix down phase really just becomes like a formality. Um, then the second takeaway there is just be honest about the point of diminishing returns because you could spend all day moving mics around and tweaking sounds and stuff like that, but I think it's all about getting the best bang for your buck and then starting the session so you can get a good performance from the artist because like a crappy performance recorded really well is going to be horrible. Whereas like an amazing performance even recorded not so great, you know, has legitimacy and power. So you're always kind of playing with that balance and you just want to get the sounds, you want to have a process and a system for placing your mics and making decisions so that at the end of the day like it's as good as it can be with the t realistic time constraints you have and and also spatial constraints you know you might not be in a perfect room or you might not have access to as much sound dampening materials as you would like or the best mics or something it's just like okay where are the trade-offs I'm gonna make how can I make good compromises and how can I just make this sounding as good as it possibly can in a reasonable amount of time and then just get going tracking so um, that's always a good reminder to just you know see the big picture um, and then I got into working on my guitar solo. Um, it's coming together really, really well. I slowed it super, super down. It's like 30 BPM slower than it's actually going to be on the real track. And I just started going through it really, really slowly, just really relaxed, um, just developing the ideas, playing through it over and over again. Oh, that would sound cool here. Oh, that's how I'm going to get to that note, finger placement wise. It just when things are slowed down, it's so much easier to make those adjustments than when you're just kind of like pushing, pushing, pushing. And then when you start to speed it up once you've got it really worked out, I think if you do that process slowly, then, um, you know, it's, I often surprise myself like, wow, like that actually sounds even faster than I thought it would. And there's, if, you're, if you want something to sound fast, the main thing you want is for it to be clean. And what that means is like you really want it to be in time in the pocket and have good um, note duration, like the right separation between 16th notes, let's say, or 32nd notes, you can often simulate speed by just playing really clean. Whereas something played really fast but not that rhythmically tight um, just ends up sounding kind of crappy. So um, something to think about. Um, that was pretty much it. I just put a ton of reps in on the solo. I'll start speeding it up tomorrow probably and I'm really happy with how it's sounding so far so um, yeah like I said some of the other things on my mind it's all good stuff I just like have these sort of unexpected opportunities um, professionally and uh, and I guess personally outside of music going on right now and so that <laughs> honestly was like they're really big and they kind of require some big decisions which is great, but you know, it still takes time and energy to really process that stuff and make a good decision because there's trade-offs both ways. So I did my best to stay focused on the musical front and sometimes that stuff's gonna come up where there's just a lot of stuff on your mind and I find it very valuable to just like focus on something else for a little while when I'm trying to make those decisions. And then I, I'll let it come in and out during the session. You know, I'm not trying, like, Part of why I do music is so I can express what's going on inside me. Um, so I use that in the session to kind of fuel the emotion of what I'm doing. But at the same time, like if I'm really trying to get work done, then there's like a certain level of focus that needs to be there. I, I can't just be daydreaming about these other possibilities. So I think I struck a good balance. Hopefully tomorrow will be a little more focused, but it's all about just bringing the best I've got on a day in day out basis. And that's all I can ask of myself. So I definitely feel that I did a good job with that today and I'm, I'm happy. So I appreciate you guys for tuning in as always. Hope you guys are out there grinding towards your goals, whatever it takes, enjoying the process as much as possible. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for more. Until then.